In this segment, we will discuss how calcium ions they move across the membrane and what are the different mechanism which are involved. Because we know that the calcium concent calcium ion concentration in the cell is very crucial and very critical. There are different membranes, different processes which take part in this. And since this is an ion, and ion is always charged, so it means that the channels, they would be voltage gated, and there will be certain proteins which act during this process. Now, we have already studied that the two major type of signaling receptor, that is GPCRS and RTKS, have been discussed earlier, their importance and role, we have already discussed that how they integrate and how they combine with the calcium regulation. Now, voltage-gated calcium channels means that a potential is generated across the membrane and it helps the transfers it helps the movement of the calcium during this. So interaction of extracellular messenger molecule with a GPCR can lead to the activation of the enzyme. Again, you see the enzymes are involved and enzyme phospholipase calcium which, which splits the phosphoinositoid PIP2 to release the molecule IP3. So it means that it's phospholipase enzyme, it splits the phosphoinositoid into PIP2 to release the molecule of IP3, which helps the transfer of calcium across the membrane. Now, IP3, what it does, it opens calcium channels in the ER membrane, leading to a rise in the cytosol, like calcium. Naturally, when those membranes or when those channels will be open, the calcium ion, it will pass through. Now, extracellular messenger that signals through RTKS can trigger a similar response. If there is a calcium present extracellular in outside the cell, cell ke bahar hai, to what it will do? It will trigger a similar response that the calcium can pass through those channels. Now, the primary difference is that RTKs, it activates the member of the phospholipase C gamma subfamily, which possesses an SH2 domain. Remember, we have already discussed different domains, different enzymes, how they act, and SH2 domain it allows them to bind to the activated phosphorylated RTK. And this is the mechanism of transport of calcium. Now, how cytoplasmic calcium concentration in the real time can be visualized? In this case, the role of calcium ion in cellular responses, it has been greatly discussed and advanced by the development of indicator molecule. Molecules which indicate that how this calcium is concentration increases, how it binds with the molecules and indicator molecules are there. These indicator molecules are such that they emit light in the presence of free calcium. If there is a free calcium, they will emit light. These are the molecules which are designed and these compounds are synthesized in the form that can enter a cell by diffusing across the plasma membrane. Now, these compounds, they are of the smaller size, not of the size of the calcium ion, but they can diffuse across the plasma membrane. And once they are inside the cell, these compounds, they combine with the calcium and emit the light and enable to 
leave the cell that is the modified form of these compound. For example, in this diagram you will see that this is a calcium wave in a starfish egg which is induced by a fertilizing sp sperm. And as we move from one side to another, we can see that the excess of calcium, how the egg is lighted and how egg emits the light and that can be a marker or that can be indicator that what is how much calcium is there. Now depending upon the type of a responding cell, there are different cells which respond differently to the calcium. A particular stimulus may induce perspective oscillation in the concentration of the free calcium ion. Oscillation means it is not that in the cell the calcium is constantly going on or going out. No. Sometimes the concentration increases, sometimes concentration decreases. So there is an oscillation in the concentration of free calcium ion and that oscillation it causes a wave of calcium release that spreads from one end to the other end of the cell and this is how the signaling process is controlled continuously during the cell growth process.